So this one is entitled Perform Network Management. What we're really talking about is monitoring the network and, and we'll see a couple of things that, that uh, asked about and hopefully I'll see, you'll see some error messages uh, asked about earlier about what happens when something goes wrong on my network. How do I know about it? We're going to get messages and the syslog is one of the things we're going to talk about. SNMP is, is earlier this morning, but the... Uh, the network management, the basic is the practice of administering computer networks. And I know real, uh, real, uh, I guess, earth shattering words there. Uh, common goals, ensure that the network supports the organization's business requirements. Are we supporting what the network was intended to do? Keeping in mind that we don't make anything. Uh, networkers are by definition overhead because you can't go in and say we made a million widgets and made a hundred million dollars for the company or grossed a hundred million dollars or whatever else. All we say is we think we made it better and probably we did make it better. We made it more efficiently. Networking in in the example of LeaderQuest right now, the things that they've been doing with the remote instruction and I'm presuming that most of the uh, uh, physical classrooms are set are shut down that what they've been doing in the remote instruction has now supports networking and all that networking capability that was available the resources are available are now paying dividends we presume for these things deliver high performing services the high performing services we're talking about is save time and money and all these improve efficiency only do these redu reduce costly uh, downtime and improve system performance all of those things through monitoring what's going on we want to look for trends and the trends that we see can then provide us the information to go to management and say we need to modify this we need to modify that uh, this is an issue, that's an issue, and I may, may have talked about it at Blue Ridge. We used the uh, Citrix clients on the uh, uh, the people that came in, and we had a bunch of, uh, of I don't know exactly what they were. I, they're not students, but they, they were uh, counselors, that's the right word, that would go into the schools, counsel kids or whatever else, and then they would come back in the afternoons with their laptops, sit down, connect to the server, and update the databases, uh, the health databases. HIPAA, kind of a pain uh, to do all of that, but uh, they had to have the Citrix uh, clients. So we would monitor how many of our Citrix clients, the maximum that were in use at any time, because you don't want somebody to not be able to do their job. And that's what these monitoring things are about. We, we'd monitor these things and, and map them every week to see what's going on. And then when we get to the top end, we could go to management and say, we need to buy 50 more of these things because I think they can't go or 25 or whatever, whatever lots they came in. It wasn't like you bought them one at a time. But how do we do that with something like this, with the SNMP uh, to, to monitor what's going on? Bandwidth, what kind of bandwidth uh, we can monitor uh, uh, CPU utilization and map these things out. Uh, deliver high performing services <clears throat> to users that depend on the network for their jobs. Uh, do we have the bandwidth? Do we have the throughput that we need for these things? Time and money, automating uh, repetitive or time consuming tasks so that we can maybe write a script or use SNMP in the uh, read-write mode uh, to be able to send configuration information uh, to devices. Time and money, if you have repetitive, improve the efficiency and security, standardizing policies, procedures, configurations, and equipment. And a lot of these, this terminology that we're talking about here, time and money by automating, automating repetitive tasks, some of that's going to be in the automation portion of what is now uh, part of CCNA. Uh, reduce costly downtime through automated troubleshooting, fault analysis, improve systems performance through proactive monitoring, maintenance, and capacity forecasting. I need, I'm going to need more uh, Citrix clients. I'm going to need more of this. 
I've got too many of these things. I don't need to spend all of that money on these licenses. SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol, is the one, one of the ones that we use, Syslog, and then quality of service. We'll look at quality of service after we do SNMP uh, for these things. SNMP is an application layer protocol, collects information from network devices for diagnostics and maintenance purposes. UDP uses ports 161 and 162. And these are uh, from the uh, the NMS, and let's just go ahead and do the next one, includes a SNMP managers, the network management system, a piece of software, and then the agent software is going to be installed on the network devices. A management information base. The management information base is going to, and, it, and what it's going to be is going to have, yeah, it's going to have a representation for each of the devices. It's going to be a series of numbers that, represent uh, explicit specific devices for these things. So the setup looks something like this. We got the SNMP agent on the devices and the SNMP manager on a computer. Just as a guess guess I got just just hopefully have one of those if I can if my server here will start for me. Let's try a Turn off full screen and turn on full screen and see if it will do me. Um, it's not going to. It's not going to do me a little bit better. But we can move this over here and let's see if we can get on this thing. If I got the password right. This is when we talk about these things, what's going on. I have a number of sensors here, and then I have live data, what's going on in fast Ethernet zero zero traffic. This is on a, the, a, a router that it's connected to. I have a live graph here for two hours, and there's not a whole lot going on because this is a this is an emulated router running on a uh, run on a machine. Actually, it's running on the same physical machine that that the virtual machine's running on. So we have a history here, of the, the live data, the two hours, then we can go to two days worth. And you can see this started, I started this thing up uh, yesterday just to have some data for today. 30 days and you can see when I have classes, uh, they come and they go uh, for these things just so that you can see. And then 365 days, what kind of records do you need for this? What kind of historicals do we need? We can go back in here and this is the NMS, the uh, network management system, the workstation that the software, and this software is one called PRTG. If you want to play with these things, you can get a free version which gives you a hundred sensors. It's been around for a while. First time I ever used it, I think it gave us 10 sensors. So they keep going up. Uh, but when we go down here, a number of devices that I've gotten on here, I have the, my network infrastructure, uh, how long the response time is, and here go to the gateway, the ping, zero milliseconds, and we'd expect that because it's sitting in the same room with me. DNS, two milliseconds, how long each of these things take. 127.001, which is going to be our uh, local host. We have the ping time, the CPU load, CPU load, and you can, as you can see, and then it won't do it for me, as you mouse over these things, it's going to jump up and show you the information. Disk free, 52%, things that you would want to see. I was hoping it was going to show me my error messages. We can go back and look at those because when I first started this this morning, first opened it, I had a number of error messages. That's how we're going to get the information. This is the router that I was talking about. I got a ting, ping here, eight milliseconds. This is running in GNS3 on this same physical machine. Uh, system health, the memory, 26 megabytes of memory. Fast Ethernet, not a whole lot's going on here because it's not really sending data back and forth. Uh, the system health, the CPU, different configurations. What is I think is interesting is we have this uh, SSL certificate here, these sensors here. One of them says that they're weak, and the other one says, well, you've got a real problem. That's something that we might then want to go investigate with this thing.
the and what I wanted to see if I had one. This is the uh, this is the machine that I use, the physical machine that I've been using. And we can go to the live data, and this is CPU utilization. You can see here, 730 turned it on, and it's kind of loafing around. It went to sleep. It got woke up, and then I started using it. I started here, and this is about right. This is when I started the uh, the meeting, and then we got the utilization up and down and around, and then as we go on down here, the current utilization 925, and this this updates every 60 seconds. So 925, 926, uh, when we do those things, and you can set the updates for whatever you want them to be. The two days, and since I don't run this a whole lot, but I did run it again a little bit yesterday, the meeting was going on, and then down here, six o'clock, the meeting ended. Not very much going on. The machine went to sleep, and then I shut it down. It was down overnight. Uh, it woke up here. I started it at 6 o'clock this morning. And then it kind of dally, dilly dallied until it went to sleep. The, the kind of historical data that we might need. The 30 days. And again, you can see that I just run these this for classes. And then over the course of a year, yeah, I got a, had a problem here. And they do peak. You know that CPU utilization goes up, goes down. Sometimes it goes crazy. Uh, when we do these things. But this is the NMS, the Network Management System, uh, that is used uh, for these things. And the the agent is the thing that is on the device itself. And I think that, just while we're here and we talked about the MIB, and in the MIB we're going to have OID, which is Object Identifiers. Uh, what do these things do? And I think I've got an SNMP in here. Yeah, SNMP, so you can see. And it's something that's really kind of undramatic uh, when we look at it. Let's see if it will show up. We can filter it. SNMP, get next on down the line. Simple network management protocol. The community string, and we're going to have two community strings, the public and the private. SNMP version 1 and version 2, and version 1 is not used anymore. When we talk about SNMP today, typically it's SNMP v2. Uses what's called a community string uh, for security. And as you can see, it's here, it's, it's clear text. So, how much security is it? If you can put a sniffer on the network, you can see the community string. And the defaults for the, uh, for the, uh, uh, read only, just get the data is public and the read write is private. That means that, yeah, we, if we're going to do a, a, a read write, we probably want to do a little bit more security on this thing, a little bit more filtering and access control list will allow us to do that. Who can actually get this information? Since we have port numbers here and protocols UDP, we can filter on our network, another advantage of layer three devices. We can filter on our network which specific IP addresses are allowed to access this information when we do these things. And this is a get next request. When we, when we go to it, we're going to get down here the variable bindings. Actually, I guess we're not. Yeah, we are. Get next. And what I'm going to do over here, just scroll over here, get next. These, this number string 1.3, and we're going to have one in a second. 1.3.6.1.2.1.1.3.0 represents something. It could be a fast Ethernet, a gigabit Ethernet, a fast Ethernet interface, something on a Cisco router. It could be a uh, 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 the CPU on my uh, device, on my on my computer, which which I was monitoring. So these things, the source, and that probably is in the destination 216. Uh, the source, and then I guess I was monitoring. I didn't even know how I'm, how I got these, but I know that the one dot 27 is the computer that I am using in the 216. I think that I found some place to, to monitor me off-site. So it is actually telling me what's going on. I can see what's going on on my, uh, on my device. SNMP. And again, the, uh, the, the, the version 2C here, uh, UDP. And 
Let's go back to UDP. Pretty simple protocol. We have a source port, a destination port, a length, and none of that other stuff. No three-way handshakes, no acknowledgments. Very, very simple. But what's going to tell us that we had a problem? And that's probably, that's instead of happening at layer four, it's going to happen at the, uh, somewhere on up the, uh, on up the stack when we do those things. IP version 4, the source is, is the, uh, the 1.27 and the destination is 2.16 for these things. So the, what the actual data packet looks like as well as, uh, uh, looking at the, the, uh, uh ML, M, S, the, uh, the, uh, the SNMP manager, the, M, the, the management system, that goes on to these things. The SNMP manager piece of software that resides on a device somewhere. Uh, w one of the reasons that I like to like to do demos is one, whatever we say, you get a visual and say, oh, so that's what it is. Probably a year and a half ago, somebody says, okay, they always talk about SNMP. How does it work? SNMP is a protocol. It is the protocol that's used to send this information back and forth. We still have to have some sort of application in order to do it. We have to have an agent running on the device and the agent has to have a MIB, a management information base. And inside that management information base, it has to have a listing of devices that it can provide information for to something that can understand that to a particular application. The messages we have trap messages and inform messages. The difference is uh, the trap uh, only one initiated by the agent, the inform introduced by SNMP v2 to acknowledge the trap. So the trap is an unacknowledged message. The inform message has acknowledgement. It, it's going to be something in this inform and, and trap and what's going to tell it that it didn't get it is going to be the application so it can resend this thing. We have the get to get the data requested by the manager, the get next, and that's what you saw in the uh, in the Wireshark uh, request for the next available data, get bulk request, multiple iterations of the get next, and then the response, the agents reply to the get and the set message. And again, the agents are the the software that's running on the devices. Uh, if you use SNMP in Windows, you have to turn the agent on. The, uh, the, the uh, get the information is there, the send the information is, and actually you have to turn on SNMP, I'll say that again. You do, uh, the get, the get's going to be the software. You do have to turn it on. I had to go in and configure SNMP on this computer to try to get the information and Windows likes to use their own uh, monitoring system. It didn't play all that well, but it played well enough to get the uh, CPU utilization. I tried to do a couple of other things and it just can't find those devices. So they're not in the MIB uh, for this thing. But if you want to do it in Windows, you want to play with this, you do have to turn it on. And this is another way to, to get all these things through. You got to configure the community string and on and on and on and on and on in order to make this thing work. And, and again, me, I am hard-headed. Uh, I don't get it a lot when somebody tells me something. I got to go in and do it. Maybe that's why I'm so hung up on labs. I, I frequently have to do it multiple times in order for that to happen. And then the set uh, request to change a variable. So get gets the information, set sends information, tries to change a variable on the device itself, which would be in the uh, in the read-write communities for these things. SNMP notifications sent by the agents to establish communications with the network management systems, the uh, MRTGs, PRTGs. Uh, MRTG is, a, is an open source version of PRTG. Free, obviously. Uh, that's what we used to use to monitor. We monitored the uh, the data on each of our rooms, each of our rooms was in it. It's an on network so that we can see if somebody was abusing their internet privileges. So you can configure that. It was free. We didn't have any limitation on the number of, uh, of, of sensors that we used on it. A little bit harder to configure 
than PRTG. PRTG, pretty much a GUI. MRTG, pretty much uh, you go in and do the configurations yourself uh, for everything. Two types of notification messages sent by the agent. The trap, based on a fire and forget. Uh, when the SNMP agent uses the trap message, the message transmitted to the IP address of the management system, no error recovery mechanism, and then the inform. And, and those were the terms that were in the uh, previous slide. The inform uh, messages include an acknowledgement mechanism when the network management system receives an inform message. It acknowledges the receipt, and this is for version 2 and version 3. Again, version 1 was a, a startup, and it it kind of was okay, but it was replaced pretty quickly by version 2, which has been used for a long time. Doesn't have any real security. You saw the community string, the open text that's in the uh, SNMP, uh, SNMP uh, uh, data packet. Uh, version 3, which we'll see in a minute, has actual real security depending on how we uh, configure it. The three things that we, we saw in the, uh, in the questions a little earlier uh, for that. The management information base, the database maintained by an SNMP agent, uh, stores the information in variables when we do these things. The, the variables uh, in the MIB are, are used uh, by the network management system to monitor the control device. Uh, the MIB variables are defined by OID's object identifiers, object identifiers things, resources, CPU utilization, memory utilization, uh, bandwidth on a particular interface, uh, the status of the interface, different things that can be configured on these things. It's a hierarchical structure. You saw what one looked like in the, in the Wireshark when we did those things. Uh, a hierarchical structure uh, specified by RFC and Cisco proprietary standards for the Cisco proprietary stuff. And the uh, one down here, for example, MIB variable, and this is in the uh, in the notes on the on the on the uh, PowerPoint. CPU utilization is 1.3.6.1.4.1.9.2.1.58.0. So that whole thing, and that's not the one that is in this structure here. To view the CPU util CPU utilization information without entering the uh, variable, the MIB is stored on the device and then it just sends that information to the uh, network management system. Well, here it is up here. The MIB variable for CPU utilization, we would go to 1.3.6.1 and you see those things go down pretty standard and then we go to 0 0.4, uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.9, we're down in Cisco and then on down into uh, the, the, uh, the OID here. Uh, would get to the CPU utilization of this. It's going to be a long sequence of numbers that represent different things. This is a, a, a screenshot of one of the, of a, an OID value, a, a organizational identifier or object identifier that goes on uh, with these things. The versions, three versions, one, two, C, and two. We say one, two, and three, we had 2, then 2A, 2B, 2C. We're on 2C now. When we talk about version 2, we're talking about 2C. Version 3, one that's coming online. Uh, two important features supported by these, IPv4 and IPv6 access control list are supported by all of the versions. Security, version 1 and version 2 use the community string. And back to this, the community string is just a a text string, what that does, and where did it go down here? Right here, the community string is just a text string, and you can see it interpreted over here, public, and you can see it in here, and you can see the hexadecimal that goes with it uh, for the for it down here in the in the uh, in the in the strings of things. And we we'll click on the public here, and I will get back to the uh, get to it for real uh, to do these things. So. What it says is that's what gets sent from the device and then the NMS, the management system, will accept everything that has that community string, which means that other individuals that can see this traffic that obviously can find that community string can now 
uh, look at our traffic, what's going on. And that's where the support for the access control lists come in so that we can filter that information and where it's actually going to go to specifically, who's allowed to see that. Acts as a password, clear text, uh, version 1, MD5, uh, weak for version 2 and version 3. DES is used in version 3 for these signs. Two types of communities. The read-only community used for the get messages can only, uh, cannot be used for the set. It can only get or read information. Uh, the read-write community can both get and set, read and write. Obviously, RW, read, write, read and write to these things. Uh, SNMP agent processes the get and set messages for the uh, network management host only if the community string matches the community string configured on the agent. So we have to be able to interpret or see what's going on. we, we, we got to match up for these things. 2C uh, includes the read-only and the rewrite community strings and access control lists for filtering packets. The advanced features bulk retrieval for these things, the number of messages that are going to be sent back and forth. Error reporting version 1 and version 2, uh, one type of error code. Version 2 or version 1, one type of error code. Version 2, multiple error types. And then we have exception reporting that's available in these things. It uses uh, different types of exceptions such as no instance, no such object, and the end of the MIB view exceptions. And then if you try to add something, this is where you're going to get the uh, no object. Uh, I try, try someone I try to add some things, uh, some Microsoft things to it. Yeah, those objects don't exist, so I get the no object error for these things. Version 3, all of the features for 1 and 2, uh, replaces the, uh, the uh, community string, the community-based password, the clear text password with security features. Message integrity uh, is going to be that identifies whether the message is undergone any modification. When we say security, we have to configure the security. We have to, when we do version 3, turn on version 3, and then tell it what we want. Uh, message integrity is going to be the default in these things. Encryption is going to be optional. Authentication is going to be optional. So message integrity is going to be the one constant in this particular version of the protocol. Security groups and levels, and this is from the question this morning, the no auth, no authentication only uses message integrity. Authentication, message integrity, and authentication, and then I always want to say privilege, but priv is privacy is going to give us message integrity, the default authentication. So we're going to add each thing to these. It's a, it builds the different layers, and then encryption is also going to be available in the uh, in the privilege one. Uh, the task list to do these things, and this is just a you know. What we're going to do, SNMP server, and I guess we could go back over here and these, I don't want the, I don't want the Windows server now, I want to get to this guy, and if I go in here and I'm going to do some stuff here, let's see if in its console, and this is driving me nuts here today. When it, you notice that yesterday, a couple of days ago, when I did the uh, did the uh, full screen, it did a full screen. So maybe if I this is this one, let's get out of here. Let me see if I can actually get. something working here. Got too many of these things and it's yeah okay go over here. And I keep grabbing the wrong thing on it because my console, let me bring it back over here and see if I can get the consoles down into a an area where we can see them. Let's see why 
this thing is being so nutty for me. Now let's see if it'll do me a little better here. I'm going to go back to console here. So I have a console. I'll make it a little bit bigger. I'll go to change the settings and let's go to the appearance and change the front font to something like 14. Maybe make it a, a little bit and, and all of that and what, we, what we're going to do is going to go to con, config t and do snmp and then snmp dash server and then the things that we can do in here and the snmp server the the things that are their community and what community string are we going to do enable snmp set the community string to access uh, uh pri priv privileges or privs for this thing this is snmp version 2 and i don't think that i have and i don't have the uh the ability to do this but snmp server what are we going to do turn it on with this one trap source the trap timeout the trap and we might as well look at the trap here uh, the trap and then the uh, let's see the trap source trap let's look at authentication for it access control list fire a number of things that can go in here and then we can look at the uh, Let's look and see what link is, which says the IETF standard SNMP traps that are going to be used for this thing. Trap source, trap timeout. I, I thought that. That's the SNMP, and then what can we do? Oh, yeah, let's look at the MIB here. Of course, it always is. Incomplete command. Let's see, persistent nibs. Let's see, persist. And it's not showing me anything. And target. So, probably not going to show us a whole lot of anything in here. Uh, list. And then the host names and the, where I'm going to send that information to. The only objective here is uh, that there are some configurations that are available in here. What I wanted to look at is, let's look back to the server. That'd be a dash, doesn't it? And then community, chassis ID, file group host, inform. Configure the inform options, the things we talked about, location manager, modify the manager, the packet size, queue length, trap. And I wanted to see what was in the traps here in this disauthentication. It was trap source and trap timeout. So there are some things that are configurable in here, but to turn it on and we can set a community string if we do the community and then the word, the, the string, which means that we don't have to use the default. That means that the other end, the uh, the server is going to be using that also. So the read read only sets the read only community string read only read write to go in these and what we want it to do. Access control list list can be referenced here uh, to do these things. The server location text description where is it? The text descriptions and a lot of these commands that we have or while we're doing commands we can use descriptions and that's kind of a handy thing to do uh, not only for whoever may take over for you but you come back a year and a half later and say why did I do that contact the contact name for these things these are some of these things as you can see you probably aren't going to do in today's world the contact name uh, gives a hacker a starting point uh, for for what goes on. Uh, configure the traps and the informs, the uh, SNMP server host, some of the things that we saw in here, host name or IP address, who we're going to send it to, which is going to help us a little bit in order to determine uh, which one of these things 
are, are going to, or what IP addresses are going to. So some thoughts, and let's see if we have the SNMP, what is it, SNMP server host, and then what is available in here, SNMP server, and we should have, and, and on these that I have, not all of the things are available. We have the word, the host name, or the IPv6 address, whatever we're doing on this thing. So I could do, uh, uh, or, or HTTP uh, for these things. The, the word for them, a host name, or IPv6. Let's, let's see if we have the uh, 192.168.1.27. It's not going to go there. Uh, because then in forms and traps versions, what are we going to do? Let's see if this one will do a version. So this one actually will use version 3. You can go through, and this, this is uh, part of uh, a GNS3, which gives us a little bit more capability. So we can specify the version that we're using here. Uh, traps, send the trap messages to this host. Traps, uh, and then the version word for the community string. And uh, let's see, this would be public, which would be my community string. And then after that, see, we go on and on and on and on for the configurations that are available uh, for these things. Uh, not that you got to know those right now, but just that kind of handy to know that some of these things, yes, uh, we make them kind of simple, but they get a little more difficult at times. Uh, syslog for sending, and we've looked at, start my Kiwi syslog server so you can see what the result looks like, and then we'll go back over here and look at the, uh, the configure it, configure it a device to use this syslog server. If it gets starting here, yeah, and this is, this is the Kiwi syslog server, the free version of it. You can get a free version. They, they trapped me one time and said, hey, you need to upgrade this thing. And when they upgraded, they upgraded me to a pay version. I had to go back and get the free one again. So if you do these things, when we do this, we're going to get the error messages that would go uh, to the console. That's going to be the default. And I don't have anything in here for a long time, but this server is running. I did one down here. I did a debug. Uh, we're going to look at these things. Debug are uh, error level 7. Debug. This says it says local 7. And I get notices up here. So I got some notice info and debug information. We're going to look at those in just a second. This is the software that's running on a Windows machine that allows me to accept logging information from a device and send it to me. This router 6 here actually is uh, connected to the devices and let's see if I have our, our 6 in here and I, let me get, ri get rid of some of these consoles that I thought that I had change the size of one of these but maybe not again I just want to get just want, I'm just want to get rid of some of these right now because I've got too many of them I've got R1s and putties and here's an R6 but I still don't so let's just go ahead and modify its size and this this uses putty to connect in here uh, putty is a client that you would use uh, in today's world and, and it can be used for a number of different things we go here for the well, let's go ahead and apply it so that we can get bigger but if I go to uh, uh, say oh, let's just change settings here uh, for it session logging keyboard so the session that we have is going on this thing we'll look at putty in a second so what I want to do here is to go to config T and do logging I think and then logging here the host name or IP address and the, the logging is going to be 192.168.1.27 that's where the syslog server is running carriage return now we need to specify what severity level that we want to be sent there. And again, there's a whole bunch of things here. Buffered set the buffered longing parameters. 
console, set the console logging parameters, count exceptions, some of the things that you do in the labs. But what I wanted to show by using this is that there's a whole bunch of other things. Uh, one of the things that we can configure here is the trap set the syslog server logging level so we'll do trap and then the question mark is the zero to seven alerts critical debugging emergencies errors informational notifications and warnings the ones that you saw in the syslog server that i had were severity seven debugging which is the least severe thing that can happen to us and then we had uh, a couple of information and notifications, which are fives and sixes that go on. So let's just go and say that we want to, and I think that, let's try seven, and I think it's going to tell me that it's wrong. Well, okay, it'll take whichever one we want. You can either do that or the word here, La lagging, yeah, logging, trap, and let's do debugging to do that. So anything that is comes up on this machine is going to be sent to theoretically at least the uh, the uh, syslog server now let's see if we got anything here yeah we did so the information here logging start stop 41 which is today sent me that and says it is an info uh, that goes on this thing. The last thing I got down here was a 220. We got a notice. We'll just let this thing run, see if we can get any other information. So what syslog allows us to do is to take the logs off of the devices and have them in a file. Once we have them in a file, we can do log analysis. We can have, use log analysis software in order to, uh, to do that uh, for those things. So uh, widespread syslog widespread been around for a long time it's another uh, one of those mature protocols logs from many different devices and compile them in the central location I could on that syslog server if I had other devices connected to this network I could send their logs there helps us to put things together so that uh, if we have something happen on our network, we can see what happens sequentially on those things. And back to the times, the time servers, the times on these things are going to be important because time is going to be one of the things that we would see in it. Over here and again, back and forth. The date, the time, and if we had a number of events that happened, we could see within our network the sequence of events did one affect the other uh, when we do the logging and if you're not going to do log analysis and i say this constantly if you're not going to do log analysis there's nothing keeping them uh, because all they're going to do is take up space events categories by severity we saw that uh, the cisco device stores the syslog messages internally by default uh, configured to send the message to the syslog server or another destination where we want to keep those things. Syslog itself, and, and this is kind of what we did, we have the syslog server here sends the alerts to the administrator, can check the syslog messages and troubleshooting these things. The devices over here, uh, syslog, the messages are sent to the syslog server and then the syslog server, depending on how it's configured, can send us uh, error messages so that we can see what's going on with the devices. Uh, I want to keep going here for a few minutes. I want to finish this portion and then we'll we'll take a break. Uh, this uh, syslog, the uh, network devices send the messages uh, and debug output to the local logging process stored inside the device and that's going to be the default. Manually configure the logging process to allow the messages to be sent to a different uh, destination, syslog, internal buffer, TFTP, different places that we can send these to. Uh, syslog server, probably the cleanest one to do that. Uh, logging commands and logging, synchronous logging keeps unsolicited messages and debug from interrupting the command line input. If you've ever been doing a configuration and then the log message comes up and disturbs you and now you got to start over. If you will, in LineCon0, give the logging synchronous command, that won't happen to you. The other one is, if you make a typo and you get 
uh, one where it goes into and, and it looks like 255, 255, 255, whatever. The system's trying to resolve your typo into an FQDN. So if you will configure uh, no uh, IP domain lookup, if you're not going to use DNS for lookups on your uh, devices, no IP domain lookup, that won't happen to you. So a couple of, I guess, in real life commands that you can be used for this thing. Logging synchronous so that it doesn't interrupt our configurations. And it'll just bring you back to a complete line. And then no IP domain lookup for these things. Set the syslog server. We did that. Identify another collector. We can configure the buffer size with these logging buffered and then the size that we want to set for the buffer objective for these things is so that we don't overwhelm the system. Monitor level limits messages logged to the console by severity level just like we limited the things that were sent to the syslog server by severity level. The severity levels, the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, I'm going to say these are here, they're in a lot of places. Take a look at them, have an idea of what they are. That zero is the most severe, and I've always thought that is kind of interesting. It's an emergency. The system may have become unstable, unusable, not unstable, unusable. And I've always wondered if the system's unusable, how's it going to send me that message? But it does. And then we have alert and immediate action, critical said I wasn't going to do this, but I did. Critical error warning notification. Information debugging is the least severe of any of these things. The logging types, five different logging types. Console logging, which is the default. That's the ones that we see when we do a control Z to get out of. Control Z will take you back to a, a privilege exec mode and and save the configuration that we've done into the running configuration file, not into the startup. Terminal logging on the VTY lines is not enabled by default. So if you're telneted into something, unless you use terminal logging, configure terminal logging, you're not going to see that information. Mufford logging is going to use the RAM to store the log messages and RAM random access memory means that it is Something that is not persistent, something happens to the system, it gets restarted, gets turned off, power failure, any of those things, the uh, the logging information is going to go away. Plus the fact that we're probably not going to want to take a whole lot of RAM in order to do that. We want to maintain most of the RAM for the devices to do their processing. Syslog logging, what we just looked at, external syslog servers and then SNMP trap logging allows the SNMP trap to send the log messages to an external SNMP server and we kind of saw that, looked at that, didn't configure it, but looked at the configuration possibilities uh, for it. So what we have here is the last